Let's now move on to the next terminology which is JTA. JTA stands for Java Transaction API. First thing, what is a transaction? Let's take a simple example. Let's say I am transferring some amount from my account to my friend's account. Typically these kind of things involve two steps, right? First thing is the amount has to be directed from my account and the amount has to be put into my friend's account. Let's say the first step succeeded. I mean the amount was debited from, I mean the amount was removed from my account. So 100 rupees was removed from my account or 100 dollars, 100 euros, wherever you want. So 100 was removed from my account. But while putting the amount into my friend's account, there was a problem. What should the system do? The system should also revert the earlier change. So whatever 100 was withdrawn from my system, I mean from my account, has to be put back. Otherwise, 100 is removed from my account, but 100 is not really put into my friend's account. And this is an inconsistent state. Transactions prevent a system being in an inconsistent state. Actually, I really made it very, very simple. There are a lot of complexities about a transaction. But in summary, a transaction is something where you have a set of steps. Either all the steps should succeed or none of them should succeed. That's basically what you can think of as a transaction. In Java EE, the JTA provides an API where you can say these are the different steps in the transaction. So you would say this is the boundary of the transaction. So these are the different things which are part of a transaction. So if any of them succeed, I mean, if any of them fail, then revert all the previous ones. So that's where the Java transaction API comes in, where you define an API for managing your transactions. Typically in these days, you use Spring with a little bit of AOP to manage your transactions, or you'd go for EJB to maintain your transactions. EJBs are really a good bet when you have a lot of distributed systems being part of a single transaction. Thanks for joining more than a million students who are learning from us. At In 28 Minutes, we defined a learning roadmap for Java and front-end developers. We created more than 25 courses covering all the topics that you are seeing on the screen. There are four things you can do to make best use of these courses. Number one is Udemy. You'll find a link in the description of the video to our Udemy profile. We are teaching a lot of courses on Udemy and most of them are free. Number two, visit our website www.in28minutes.com. You'd find tons of information including how you can register for our trainings and the link to Udemy and our GitHub code as well. Number three, visit our GitHub repository. With more than 20 repositories covering varied examples, it's a comprehensive source of information and code. Last but not the least, you'll find a set of discount codes for all our Udemy courses in the description as well. Feel free to use them. Good luck from the team here at In28Minutes, your destination for high quality step-by-step -step courses.